So, update, my lawyer has emailed me saying that they have not received the friend of the court ruling. I don't know what's going on with that because they should have got it the same day or the day after that I got it. So she emailed me and said that she didn't get it, which doesn't surprise me yet. But she wants me to email her all the paperwork, which I can do. Shouldn't be an issue. Um, but she said in divorce cases, she is going to be asking for an additional $1,000 for a retainer on the divorce case that was filed. Um, and with the, she says, I have to be honest with the divorce case and objections in the support matter. This is very likely to exceed the original retainer, which was already $2,500. Uh, as well as an additional thousand dollars as it typically requires five thousand dollars for a divorce with minor children with everything that I've bought in for the kids with all the child support that's I'm back that I owe now how am I supposed to come up with that much money I do not understand so I asked for a payment plan and I asked what about the original 2500 because I don't know anything about this. I honestly, I have no clue on how any of this works. My lawyer is very good, but she seems to be pretty expensive, which is, I guess, typical. I don't know. I've never had to... <clears throat> have a lawyer before and she responds with of course the 2500 that we were billing against the work and we still have a positive balance with that because we haven't done much with friend of the court and stuff like that so that's good that I still have a positive balance through that and that was but she said that was quoted based on the support case filed by the prosecutor and the divorce is a different matter and is much more involved. I certainly understand the money issues. I just don't want to put us in a position where we are in the negative. I understand. But I also feel like a payment plan would be a good way to go because not everybody has just $5,000 laying around or an extra 2500 just laying around. I did have that much. I really did. That's how I paid for her in the first place. So with paying for the lawyer, paying for everything for the kids, which I stated in previous videos, I am broke. I have 14 days 12 or 14 days to decide on if I want to hire her for the divorce. I I don't know how I'm going to come up with that money. Fun fact, my wife has the money. Because through our income taxes, everything was sent to... Our joint bank account. My wife decided to close that joint bank account and keep all of the tax money. I am legally obligated to half of that, aren't I? So with my wife having all that extra money, plus all the money that she saved from working the past eight months, while I had to pay for all the bills, well, I had to pay for everything. How is this fair? I do, I, I do not understand how she can keep this money when it was a joint tax filing. Literally, it was a joint tax filing. Even though 
most of it was mine. Because we filed in March. And she had only been working for a couple of months. So all of that should technically be mine. Oh, and through front of the court, that big ass packet that I had, it says that since she has sole physical custody, that she gets to claim the kids on the taxes every year. No. I did. Every time I turn around, I'm getting screwed. Can somebody please explain to me how this is okay? I cannot seem to figure this out. How am I at such a disadvantage going into this? I knew I would be. But how is it okay for her to keep all the tax money? How is it okay for her to claim the kids every year on the taxes now that all of this is happening? And how is it okay that I have to pay child support when I literally want the kids half the time. I literally want the, my kids with me for 50% of the time. What I want does not seem to matter. How does she get to decide what is best for her and the kids? <clears throat> I do not understand this. I cannot fathom any of this. I <clears throat> I have tried. I have literally tried. And naive and I have been naive apparently to think that, you know, we were going to get back together. That this was not going to happen. So I did everything with that in mind. I did everything with oh, everything is going to go back and we are going to live out the rest of our lives together. That is not happening. That has put me at such a disadvantage that I'm broke. I'm hurting. I cannot... I cannot be able to support two households. It is not fair. I know I keep bringing up fair. I know. And I know things are not fair for anybody. The only ones getting hurt right now are me and the kids. I feel like the kids are getting hurt. My son, as I said earlier, has autism. There are things that he is doing right now that is lashing out. He is lashing out in ways that he knows how. Because he cannot say, Dad, I am hurting. So he does things to show that he is hurting. And it hurts me. To know that he is hurting, but he can't talk about it. I have tried getting him to talk about it. I have issues talking about it. So imagine what it's like for a seven-year-old with autism trying to talk about it. it it's got to be exponentially harder. I am doing things that will help him try and express his anger, express his pain. But trying to get him to do that has been a chore because he would rather be doing other things, which I'm the same way. I will lose myself in a show. I will lose myself in a game. I will shut my brain off so I don't have to think about this pain anymore. I don't hang out with people who actually want to help me. I talk with them, but my friends 
all of my friends, none of them are married. None of them have kids. None of them have ever been through a divorce. They don't know. They understand, but they don't know the pain that's going on. They sympathize and empathize with me. They are just as confused as I am. How... How can I talk to the talk to people about this? How much pain I'm going through if they don't know the pain that I'm going through? Yes, I have great friends. They listen to me. They help me. They do the best that they can. And that's all I ask of them. But when it comes down to it, they they don't know what I'm going through. Because nobody's got the life experience that I do. Back to my son. The other day I tried getting him to draw a picture of anything. Anything. I literally want him to draw a picture of something that comes... This is from my therapist. Have him draw a picture of something that comes through... It does not matter what it is. It can be anything. But the colors, what he shows, what he draws, can help him express his anger, express his pain, express his hurt, since he does not know how to express it himself. So if anybody has any suggestions on how to get him to do that, without forcing him to do that, that would be helpful. I also, I did the same thing with my daughter because she's two years younger than him. But like I said, she doesn't have any of that stuff going on. Um, she just drew a picture of her and her mom in a wedding dress saying that they're going to get married at the same time. That's kind of telling right there. I feel like my wife is telling her things or she's picking up on things and my wife doesn't believe me. I cannot seem to get my daughter to understand that she has two houses right now. And I don't know why. She is not comprehending that this is a safe place that she can stay the night, that she can do what she needs to do, you know, and be safe and secure and feel loved here also. I don't understand why this has been such a barrier, I guess, for her to accept this. And she understands that she has to come here. She understands that she has things that, you know, are at both houses. She has a bed at both houses. She has a bed at, I mean, she has clothes here. She has clothes there. She has toys for here and toys for there. She understands that there are two places that she lives at, basically. Except she thinks that this spot is a vacation spot or a place that she has to come to as opposed to a place to live at. And every time I try and explain this to her, she tells my wife, oh, well, I want to come home now. And my wife, she knows that my wife will be here within five minutes to come pick her up. That's not fair to me. That's not fair to my daughter. 
and that's not fair to my son. My son understands a lot better than I give him credit for because he has tried to help. He's like, Zelda, it's awesome over here. You need to stay over here. And she's all like, but I can just call mom and have her come pick me up. That is not the right mindset, like I said in my previous video. I was trying to have her stay here for the long term. The long term benefits outweigh the short term ones. She tried. She tried the first night. I'll give her that. But when she got that idea in her head that she could call mom and mom would come pick her up. Anytime that she called and started crying saying, I want to come home. That set a precedent. And on that precedent, I feel like it's going to be a hard thing to overcome on October 12th because of that precedent that was set. It's going to start making me look like the bad guy. And that's not what I ever wanted. That's not what I needed. How am I going to explain to her that the courts decided that she has to stay here, that mom is not allowed to come pick her up. How am I going to explain that to a five-year-old? 